In a day and age where technology is creating a world without borders, filled with unlimited potential to improve the lives of the people around us. InnovaRex Global Health ushers in a new way of leveling the playing field with increased access to quality healthcare services delivered at your doorstep. Our qualified professionals are equipped with state-of-the-art point-of-care testing technology to conduct tests such as kidney function, liver function, electrolyte tests, body composition, hemoglobin, A1C, and many more services with the highest efficiency in delivering results. The addition to our flagship Wellness on Wheels, more fondly known as WOW Delivery Service, brings the entire clinical experience full circle. IGH has remained committed to creating the future of healthcare delivery. Gone are the days of sending loved ones outside the country for basic medical services. Innovarex Global Health offers a new peace of mind and takes pride in delivering the quality of care we all deserve. For the first time in the history of the Gambia, Gambia Printing Publishing Corporation proudly introduces the Biliomatic Exercise Book Printing Machine. The machine has the capacity to print more than 20,000 books per hour. Yes, 20,000 books per hour. It also prints magazines, newspapers, calendars, flyers, normal books and all kinds of printed documents plus items at affordable prices. With the Bilomatic printing machine, GPPC can now render high quality and non-size restricted printing service supply across the sub-region. Rush now and partner with GPPC for all your public and private printing service needs. Print with us today and you'd be offered highly professional, reliable and efficient service delivery by our team of experts. The Gambia Printing and Publishing Corporation is here to meet all demands and is reliable at all times. For more info, contact us on 437-4493 or 437-4402. GPPC is Gambian and it's yours. All right. Pony, did you remind him that the last time he sent the money, it was not enough to buy all the provisions? Oh, sorry, I forgot to tell him. Are you guys talking about money transfer to buy provisions? Yes. yes. But don't you know about Baluo? 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 What is Baluo? Baluo is a service that your son can use to send provisions directly to you guys from the shop. And you don't have to worry about the exchange rates. Tell me how Baluo works. It's very simple. Just log on to baluo.com and shop or download the app on your phone. You can shop on the website or using the app to buy online basic products for your family and friends. With Baluo, you decide what your money is spent on. Your money, your choice. Buy online products for your family and friends in the Gambia, Senegal, Nigeria or Mali. Baluo, better than sending money. Gamsel Data, now even better. Enjoy 20% extra data on all Gamsel Data bundles. Buy 20 megabytes and get extra 4 megabytes. Buy 50 megabytes and get extra 10 megabytes. Buy 100 megabytes and get extra 20 megabytes. Any amount of Gamsel Data bundle you buy, you will receive 20% extra data for free. Dial star 302 star. Data amount hash. Or go to your Yai Borom menu and choose your data bundle now. Gamsel Data, it's fast. Last longer and very reliable. Gamsil Yaiborom. Planning to have an uninterrupted electricity and water supply from solar energy in the Gambia and beyond? Worry no more. Because Solar Enterprise will provide you with the solutions at reasonable cost. We have experienced personnel who can install and advise you about your electricity and water supply with a warranty period. We have good quality solar products from North America and Europe. We provide services and sell products to individuals, organizations, institutions, private offices, communities, and government. These products are solar panels, batteries, charge controllers, 
inverters, water pump, water heaters, freezers, submissable pumps and general solar accessories. Visit our stores at 48 Kairaba Avenue and Brusubi Highway or you can call us on 7657-479-980-8483-340-9400 or 635-9906. You lost against uh, Laibin Kababajo. Why did you think stakeholders did not vote for Sadib Kamaso? Uh, first of all, when we came into this campaign, we said our mission was to stimulate interest and passion so that uh, we can increase stakeholder participation to bring football and its benefits to the doorstep of every Gambian. I am happy to say that we have achieved the part of stimulating interest and passion because for the first time in the history of the Gambia, there's been so much interest in our football. Um, I give all credit to members of my team, my executive, the communications, the media team, the A team, the men in black, all the you know, strategic intelligence, all those who have plowed in so much time, energy and resources into getting us to where we are today. Now, with regards to the elections, the voting process itself in the hall was transparent. But what happened before the voting process is what we are questioning. Um, we all know how voting is done in the Gambia. First of all, when we go for congresses, even the seating arrangements were not proper. All the previous congresses, seating arrangements, every region, every club would have your name tags written. But all of this was pre-planned by the president and the, the, the people who were supporting him in the electoral committee. Now, when you come to any congress, usually you have the tags there. Say, for instance, if this is Walidan, there's their tag Walidan, there's, you know, Hawks, all the first division will be on one side, the second division will be on the other side, the regions will be on the other side. But what happened is yesterday, all of these delegates, most of them were taken to a hotel. And there was an audio that leaked where they were being told what to do. And they even connived with them to say, when we come to the hall, let us all sit together. So that, you know, they know what they're doing because they wouldn't let these stakeholders move. That way they're keeping tabs on what they do and it is secret ballot. But when you come here today, we saw what they were trying to fight for. They were trying to fight for block voting or group voting. All of these things were done to intimidate, you know, some of these stakeholders. And I believe some of them voted because they were coerced, but some probably they voted because this is what they wanted. And they have spoken. All we have to do is to respect that. But the whole process before the election is what we doubt. Now, if you look at the, the date of the Congress that was chosen, I made a protest. I filed a protest to the chairman of the Electoral Committee when the date was announced because Mursao is an executive member. When he saw President Bajo wrote to them, when he informed me, I wrote to them and I said, all issues regarding the elections are under your domain. You are the ones who should choose the date. The, even the choosing of the date, they did what was convenient for them. I protested. And I even protested and I said, the General Secretary, yes, is a member of the Electoral Committee, but he has a vested interest in this because we have seen him campaigning. And their reply was, it is captured in the Electoral Committee, the Electoral Code, that he should be there. I understand. He should be there because it's a part of the code. But if someone has a vested interest, they should leave. That, they didn't change that. We had to protest again regarding the members of the electoral committee, you know, two members, the chairman and one of uh, another guy who had to resign based on our protest. Fine. Next thing we know, we have the electoral committee chairman writing letters for an executive ed ed extraordinary congress that is not within their scope. The chairman of the electoral committee's mandate comes when the election starts. But today I was barred from coming inside to discuss the extraordinary AGM where they were going to amend the constitution to bring in a fourth vice president. I am a bona fide delegate of Young Africans, but I was stopped from coming in. What they wanted to see was for us to react badly and show the people that we are violent. We are not. So I accepted that. I was pulled out. I was asked to stay outside. The constitutional amendment went because some of the people who wouldn't have voted for that were all asked to sit in one corner. There was no sitting arrangement. All those things were done just to favor them. We know they're the incumbent. And we've heard what they've told some of these people. We'll give you a match, Commissioner. We'll give you this. Some of the clubs have even been disadvantaged just because they've been seen to support us. So it's not every club that is as strong as us to come out and say, I'm associating myself with this club. Again, it is secret ballot. People can tell you this and go and do the other way. But I, like I said, the voting process was transparent. The stakeholders have spoken. We have listened. But we will go and as a team. We'll sit back. If it is a petition, if it's an appeal, because I had even appealed to the Electoral Committee, Appeals Committee, about me being barred from coming in as a delegate. And they haven't replied to me. 
and normally they should have looked into that because it's an urgent matter to get back to me. But I know all the dates that have been chosen was done to favor the incumbent. So, I mean, we are going back and sit as a team to discuss our next move. Delegates are key stakeholders in Gambian football today. And uh, despite all what you have said, the stake of Gambian football lies in their hands. You must have done your calculation during your campaign period to know the numbers that you have coming into this election. Now going in, um, uh, did you realize that there are some of the people who you might have gotten to your camp, come to the hall, decided to go in and vote for Kababajo at the last minute? Well, those things happen in every election. As they say, it's secret ballot. You can never know who's voting for you. I have met each and every stakeholder. We've, trans we've, we've, we've crisscrossed this country. I've met each and every stakeholder, and what we do is to ask them for their vote and present what we have. And a good number gave us their award. That was why we were confident. They gave us their award, because that's the only thing you can do. You can't rely on... Because people say, you did a good social media campaign. You'd be amazed to know that I'm not on Facebook. I've never been. But I have a media team who control that. I have a media team who manage that. I was doing more of the face-to-face, -face, more of the one-to-ones. And I've met every stakeholder. So, you know, the ones that we believe are on our side. But if you today, if some of these stakeholders come today and decide to do the otherwise, I think they're happy with the status quo. So we'll take that. But as I said, we know there were some inducements. There were some coercions. Last night, these stakeholders were all taken to a hotel. They were giving dinner. They were told to vote this. They were told to vote the, the constitutional so amendment. Which hotel? Metzi Hotel. At, the, at Metzi Hotel, the stakeholders were there. They were told to vote in the constitution. They were told to even come and sit in one, to sit together. Normally, the electoral committee should have had seating arrangements. Wherever you go, CAF or every Congress. But they did this so that they can monitor what these people are doing. So they do not leave them in, you know, because in, when they were coming, most of the RFAs were going to do a block voting. And now that things have gone this way, that's what the stakeholders wanted. The voting process, I must admit, was, was fair because it was transparent. But what happened before the voting process is what we are questioning. But as, again, as you said, we spoke to the stakeholders, we met them, we sold our agenda to the best of our ability, and most of them bought the ideas that we had. So if they change today, because we have seen the executive splitting clubs, so if they change today and take, go the other way, you know, we, we, we accept that, in, that they, that's what the stakeholders have said, but we would sit as a team to look at the next option as to the irregularities and the malpractices that have transpired before the election proper. Kaba is going to lead for four years. After four years, there will be another election. Are we going to see Sadibu Kamaso coming back to run for this top job? To be honest, what we have done is unprecedented. I'm sure there will be a lot of candidates who would want to come because this has ignited so much interest. And I've seen a lot of people who are telling me, oh, I didn't know this is how football was. So definitely, as I said, we've managed to achieve part of you know, our mission. That will depend if my team wants me. Um, football is in my DNA. You can't take football out of me. When the time comes, there will be other candidates and we'll present this. When I was campaigning, I did say the whole idea was not conceived by me. I was approached by a group of people, some of whom were even in the hall today. So what happens in 2026, you know, we still have four years to go. We don't know what's going to happen um, with the current executive, what, whether some new or other new candidates are going to come in. But we, we, we leave everything in the hands of God. But we are still in football. We're not moving. You know I'm in football and I'll still stay in football. Well, Sadibu, your starting 11, uh, very rich. Now that you have been ignored uh, by the delegates, uh, those starting 11, are you going to go in vain? Well, I can't implement the starting 11 because you can only implement that when you are there as the head to drive the policies. What we can do, we support clubs. We give them the ideas that we do. Um, we can help some of these clubs build their capacities on how to get their training compensation and things of that sort. Um, I'm affiliated with Young African Football Club now. And obviously, I'll put all my time, my resources and energy into making sure Young Africans you know, transcends from where it is. The starting 11 could have only been implemented if I am the head of the Gambia Football Federation. And I would not hesitate to share my ideas. One thing that I would have to make clear is, I have served with, the, with this executive, and it is 99% of the same faces that are there. 
I was a finance committee member and I resigned. Coming again, I've seen so many things. People would say, oh, when you win, why can't you two work together? But we all know what the environment is. Because then again, then people start saying, oh, you were there, what did you do? And you were your minority. But that is not stopping us from doing what we have to do. We have ideas. We'll bring them up. Whoever wants to, for us to share those ideas, we are happy to do that. Okay, Mr. Kamal, so you have lost this election. I was expecting you really to congratulate your counterpart, that is Mr. Lamin Kababajo. Uh, but you didn't do that. What do you think uh, the future holds for Gambian football? Well, I don't have to congratulate someone who has actually uh, flouted all the rules of the constitution in terms of the electoral process. I mean, why would we amend constitution on the day of elections? If you're amending and coming up with a fourth vice presidential candidate position, this should have been done earlier to give both camps the time to file to bring in candidates. We don't have a candidate for that position. He's the incumbent. He has all the powers. He's bringing in two other female members. We don't have those because we couldn't have done it because it's not in the constitution. So that alone is an irregularity. Why would you bring all these stakeholders to a hotel last night? You take the stakeholders, we all know what happens. The stakeholders usually are camped at football hotel. They took them to Merzi, we know what has been happening. There's certain information that you can't you know, discuss here. You amend the constitution on the morning of the election. Now, that was extraordinary General Assembly. I as a delegate wasn't allowed to come in because they knew I was going to expose most of these things. They asked the police to stop me. Citing what? The Electoral Committee Chairman said you cannot come in. But the Electoral Committee Chairman has no role to play in the extraordinary AGM, the part that we amend the Constitution. His role starts when the election proper starts. And I have made series of complaints, I have made series of protests to the Chairman of the Electoral Committee, which I believe he was working together with them. The other thing is, the Electoral Committee is housed in the GFF. There were times I went to collect forms and I told the, the, the Director of Communications, I'm not here on behalf of Hawks. In a Hawks meeting, it was discussed there that Saribu said he didn't come to collect forms on behalf of Hawks. Who must have told him? The list of delegates are always shared with them. So they have the, they have the advantage. We don't have that. I mean, what could have been you know, a free and fair election would be if the electoral committee was independent. And these are some of the protests I've, I've written to. I've even asked them for the general secretary to recuse himself. That wasn't done. I've said that times without number. The only thing they accepted was I, when, I, when I protested for the chairman and Karalang to resign. And those people resigned because they're government officials. But if you have the electoral committee house in the GFA football house, yesterday when I went to file in my, day before yesterday when I went to file in my appeal, it took me a long time before the general secretary will come down. I mean, this is a place where you just come and go up. It was the communication director that collected it. I said, I need a receipt to confirm that I filed in this appeal. They said, no, don't worry, it's okay. I mean, and on the envelope is written urgent. They know there's an election. Any information that was sent for appeal, should have been looked into, but they will put it aside. Yeah. We've seen the likes of Bajabi, who are members of the, I mean, Appeal Substitute Committee, going to President Bajos unveiling. I mean, the, 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 the things are, everything is there for people to see. So what do we have to talk about? If, if this is what the stakeholders have decided, fine. But I can assure you that the process leading up to the election is what we have a problem with. So, um, concerning the media, uh, in terms of interest, you represent your club interests here. You decide for the country, but the Gambians also have interests here. Why do GFF Congress, you ask media always out, to only cover voting? Well, I'm not aware. I was not there when um, you were but being when asked you were out. part of Kaba's team, the other time, I understand media were asked to cover only uh, uh, voting. Today, too, that's what happened. People are waiting outside. Honestly, I don't, I don't, I don't remember. The AGMs you were asked to go out? Yeah, because I see cameras. Even today, it's only now, as I said, for today, I was not aware because I was not in. But the other ones, because I, I, don't, I don't remember, but if that happens, I think that's a lapse of good judgment because for the media to be asked to stay away. Maybe at the, on the part of the extraordinary AGM, maybe that's the part that, this, that you know, talks about some sensitive issues, maybe. But the election part should be open to the... Because even the previous elections, I don't remember, I remember 2014, the media was not even allowed in the elections. It was after the declaration of the results, they were allowed. Yeah, we didn't want to waste people's time because you've seen the time it took to uh, do the voting for the president. I mean, there was a lot of confrontation here on the part of the, the adoption of the, um, the amendments of the constitution. Everybody saw what was happening. You saw there was a push and pull between even the chairman and some members of my team, where the chairman was even saying that, you know, group voting is allowed. Nobody in his, you know, no, I mean, nobody would, would 
it's incomprehensible for a chairman to say that all four of them can come. These are things that they've told them. All of these are things that they've told them. So that is in the minds of some of these stakeholders. We even have a stakeholder who wrote the name of their club on the form because maybe they, because we've seen what these things, what they do, giving people the Quran to swear and all. So if a stakeholder can write the name of their club and the name of the president on it to go and vote, they're basically showing that maybe they had an agreement because we don't want to do that. We do not want to coerce anybody. We do not want to induce anybody. We sell our agenda. If they're happy with the agenda, they can buy in. If they're not happy with the agenda, and this is a stakeholder who actually giving us their, you know, I mean, their vote. They would call me that they needed votes. They, they need balls. Oh, we are with you. So if they do that, I have to respect their decision. And I'm happy that, you know, they've done that and it's actually exposed that somebody has done that. It just teaches us the lesson that there are some people you just cannot trust. So we, 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 we are good to go. Finally, finally, do you think most of the stakeholders here tend to forget about the interests of the athletes out there to come into the hall and go in for what suits them? Because based on the, what you saw to the general public and what Kaba also saw to the general public, um, in certain instances, the general public seems to favor you in polls online than uh, what we've just seen here today. So do you think the stakeholders turning at the last minute went in for what favors them than the general athletes? Because we have so many clubs, so many regional associations, and so many allied associations under the football federation. Well, it's again, as I said, it's their choice. As I said, if you look at the seating arrangement, it is clear. One thing I even forgot to highlight is we've seen so many observers who are all associated with Team Kaba. They all have tags. All those, all those people who call themselves observers are all Team Kaba. They are all supporters of him. As you can see, if they can bar me as a president from coming in, we don't even have any observers. Our people were stopped at the junction. Palu Sise, who's a member of my executive, was ruffled up by a PIU officer there at the gate. Yes, Usainu Dabo was ruffled up. He was, you know, he was thrown out. So we've seen that. And yet, this team has over 10 people who, was, who are serving as observers. They're paying attention to what these people do. You know, looking at their body language. But, as you said, the whole country wanted us to come in. But the stakeholders who are 77 want this team to serve. And they've done that. They've spoken. Whatever we endure through this period, we can all endure that. Because we are all in this game. And it is only honorable for people to come out when the need arises for you to make a change. That's what we had offered because the excruciating pain we have suffered in our football from 2014 to date has been manifestly evident. So if the stakeholders decide to go otherwise, when they look at you in the eye to tell you we, you have our vote and decide otherwise, we can only respect their decision. And I respect their decision that the stakeholders have done that. But that doesn't mean we're not going to challenge the irregularities that have transpired today. Because FIFA and CAF were here today, but they just kept quiet. The National Sports Council were here today, but they kept quiet because they saw what happened at the gate today, how my people were being thrown out, how I was being pushed out. Because when I was filing in my nomination paper, I was General Secretary of Hawks, up to the 28th. And even on that 28th day of July, I signed a check on behalf of Hawks. On the 29th day, I saw a newspaper publication from the Standard newspaper saying that Hawks had withdrawn my signature using a letter that was dated 10th July. I still haven't seen the letter, but that's what was captured on the standard newspaper. I was able to confirm this by the simple fact that the nominations for all the candidates was out and published by the electoral committee. And every nomination paper is supposed to be signed by the president and the general secretary. I, as a general secretary of Hawks, did not sign that. So Hawks had indeed withdrawn my signature. That said, I went ahead and joined Young Africans because they are the ones who nominated me. It was only natural because I'm in football. And the transfer of an, a particular official from one club to another doesn't have a window or a particular time. Now, if we file in our list of delegates and the electoral committee tells me the timing of that is questionable because from the 28th of July to the 27th of August, people could change clubs like three, four times. So if you're telling me that is questionable, you have indeed shown that you're siding with the other side. But again, I said the voting process was fair. But what happened before the voting is what we are questioning, and we know the necessary measures we will take to curb that. Thank you for your time. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Very much. Uh, Alhamdulillah, as I mentioned, I'm very much satisfied and happy uh, because election uh, uh, is the voters that decide. Uh, you sell your agenda, your programs, and they look at your track record. 
and they do what they like to do. So I think the margin, 51 to 25, is, a, is an impressive one in any election. So Alhamdulillah, I'm very happy. Uh, but I, as, as usual, I will say I'm for that challenge because I know that more is expected from me and my executive committee. So and we'll do our best, inshallah. You have a manifesto, but let us know your short-term plans, the plans that you have differently that we have never done uh, as the president of the Gambia Football Federation. That I've never done? Yes. No, I don't think I'll be able to tell you. But what, what, uh, what's on my table today, the most urgent one, is the qualification to AFCON 2024 and also uh, to the, the, the continuation of the, co the ongoing football infrastructure pro pro projects to do everything possible to ensure that these projects are delivered as soon as possible. Well, when you were unveiling your team and your manifesto, you said you will consider yourself a failure if you did not professionalize our league. When are we going to see our league being professionalized by Kawabaja administration? We are, if you read uh, uh, the, the manifesto, it's, it's already stated there. 2024, 2025, league season. It's already there in the manifesto. Mr. Bajo, let's come back to the election itself. Uh, what is your expression over the whole process? Very, very satisfied. Very satisfied. Highly contested in terms of the procedures. Uh, everybody is interested to ensure that the rules are observed and, 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 and enforced. And this happened. So it was, it was not a rubber stamp. We, all, we are all in the, in the hall. And I'm very happy. And for me, somebody who really and, and I, 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 I respect and I adore uh, dissenting views and I adore people's criticism objectively. It can only make me and my team better. There's an allegation that you got at some of the delegates yesterday in the evening. Is that true? It's not an allegation. It's not an allegation. We have two teams. We have two teams. Every team, you go with your people and come, come and talk to them. It's not an allegation. It's the reality. The people who have identified themselves with me came together so that we, we further organize ourselves and prepare for the elections. That's all. It's but not it's an allegation. In juice. In juice? No. In juice in any way. I will not tell you that it's in juice. <laughs> they are in juice. I don't think. I think they are highly respected. People who, who were there yesterday, but they came and turned out and voted, and voted against us. So there was maybe they were not convinced. But they were there to find out actually what we later they decided to go otherwise, and we respect it. So, do, do your, uh, does the election laws allow for people to sit at one side like you did today? Like I'm not, I'm not the electoral commission. I'm telling you, ask the electoral commissioners who are responsible for that. Did you feel sleepless in the quest of reaching this level today, Mr. President? Never. Never. So, but, but also, you dodge interviews, sir. And, and me, debates, me, dodge interview? and debates, sir. me dodge interviews? And debates. Me dodge interviews? No, that's very dishonest. Let's talk about okay, the Mr. election Bajo. today. Okay, Mr. Bajo, please, can you talk about, about the beginning? Bajo, please, don't, 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 let's talk don't, about the issue. That's not, I, I, it's not a force to make to go for debate. I didn't go for debate, I won. Okay. What's about the debate? Mr. Bajo, let's talk about the issues that are affecting Gambian football in general. One of the issues is that the Gambian national team has been playing out of this country, which has shown a lot of dissatisfaction to Gambians. And the other issue is that the infrastructural development in this country is absolutely very, very poor. What will you do in your capacity to make sure that these things are fixed in the next four years? The first one is not my problem. That's the government. You all know the infrastructure, the stadium is not my problem. That's the government. And you all hear, you've seen the, the notice that uh, the stadium will be closed from the first September. And the government are ready. They got the fund. They're going to embark in, in, in working it. Whether it happens or not, that's not on my table. That's the government's business. And they've taken assumed responsibility. The issue of the current infrastructure, I think that's the first question I've answered, is on, in my uh, manifesto to ensure that we deliver them as soon as possible. Mr. Bayo, let's talk about reconciliation. I remember the last time we had an interview, you said one of the challenges is that maybe the efforts were not that much the way you want to see reconciliation. How are you going to work towards reconciling the footballing family? No, it's a for recall for them and anybody who uh, we feel uh, have a role to play in any way, we will we'll, we'll reach out to him or her so that he or she can join the camp so that we can do, for, for, uh, we can, and anybody who has any initiative, it has to be two way, anybody who has seen that this was good for Gambian football should f advance his throat to us and we'll, we'll, we'll really gladly uh, you know, take it on board so that for the football development of this country. Well, Mr. Baji, the last time you spoke, you told me that Sadi Bukamoso is a special younger brother to you. Now, as a special younger brother, he lost the election. What advice do you have for him? No, the advice is general. I don't want to mention personally. Uh, the only thing I'm disappointed because I know how highly contested the election will be. I expect, I expect a form of uh, congratulations from my opponent. That is a big disappointment. So you're disappointed that of course, I'm disappointed, but that doesn't this, this have, you don't have, I didn't affect in any way my personal relationship with him. He's, he's still, a, a special he's still my br younger brother. 
Mr. Badjo, you have served for uh, eight years at the helm of affairs at the Gambia Football <coughs> Federation. And of course, I'm expecting this one to be your third term. Will you confirm to us that uh, this will be your third term running for the presidency? The constitution of Gambia Football Federation so that this is going to my last term. And I have no intention of changing it. And I will not. Kaba, looking at this election, both of you, Kaba Bajo and Sadibu Kamaso, launched their manifesto, went through campaign, met clubs, met regional associations, and uh, came to this um, election. But the general view of uh, Gambian people um, were like, um, this season we might see changes and we might expect um, to see changes after the election. But we came to the election today where delegates and stakeholders will decide 77 votes to choose the president of the Gambia Football Federation. And the 77 um, delegates who were supposed to vote gave you 51 of the votes. Why do you think the delegate saw you as the person who will move football to the next level than Sadibu Kamaso? It's my record. I'm tested. I'm tested and I've proven to be the right person. This is why they renewed the, 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 the confidence in me again. It's my achievement that speaks and that's what encourages them. That myself and my team should be given another four years. From today, work starts. What will be the first thing that you're pointing out to ensure that Gambian football starts moving? Because most of the general public's view is that Gambian football is stagnant and it needs to move. I don't agree with you. When you say Gambian, I, I don't understand. Let's be honest with us. Who, who, in this, who would say Gambian football is stagnant? That's not fair. That's very unfair. Where, where are you? Or who are those people? The stakeholders who have put their money in football, their own clubs, they run everything in regions, some of, most of them put their own money. For them, Gambian football is, is in, this, in disguise. It's in disguise. It's, it's, it's in disguise. Thank you. Thank you. Islamic microfinance is becoming an increasingly popular mechanism for poverty alleviation, especially for developing countries around the world. This microfinance service adheres to the principles of Islam as a form of social responsibility. Yona Islamic Microfinance is the Islamic microfinance of choice in the Gambia, trustworthy and reliable. At Yona Islamic Microfinance, we provide savings products, current accounts, financing products in conformity with Islam. In addition, Yona Islamic Microfinance also offers local and international remittances, takaful fund, management of zakat, management of awqaf, trading and investment, and building of strategic partnerships to bring financial services to the doorstep of the poor with donor projects, madrasas, youth organizations, women groups, and farmer organizations. Make a choice with Yona Islamic Microfinance today. For more information on Yona Islamic Microfinance, call 377-2151 or 9832-151 or visit Yona Head Office at Tipa Garage, Bakote or visit any Yona branch located countrywide near you. Askani Adina, Askani Gambia, Askani Diaspora. Askani Gambia, 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 Money can you young lenko amal feed you the game manjai highway manjai go to highway paling ibi the plus the plus my land my the extras in skincare plus sun sun chura gete sun arawi sun bahali sun jenny sun sulale sun nokasi hanke ni lenko feed you the game manjai neko feed come ni mo kodai wa herek neko feed para cha 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 hanke wa diaspora be. You can party all that you want. We got you. Wow. What you give me? The new mama. Party for them. That go rec new D plus. Look at this. You package the linga buga yip. Mui arau. Mui chura gete. Mui sin bahalista lumbo de. Sin kerengki sobi. You know yip amal nengen kufi. 
Black Gambia Tamit Nak, I'm going the working women. We want to make life easy for you. Our bahal is pre made. Bahal samalorek. Even bachelors is ah. Bo Amerik sa rice kuga. Bahal samalorek. Take some bahal rek. Ahanke. Bahal is salom lawa de. Ahanke. Charles Malay wahe. Bululu pase. Amal lilian nak sin own freezing system. Umnekani. Sin freezer de nekani. Then la jaybe pare. Bula nehe. You freeze all that, and you it all. And when you freeze that, you put it in your way. 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 Fini, walaupun di mana area binga hamil tu ni, paling nyaw defare, you know, package sun arawek, sun all those kind of stuff. Mone kene nyuci pare pare aja, nak pare ngun. We're not quite ready, but we're almost there. Lulu bu pase, we have another work area. Fitna am a meat cutting unit, fish and meat cutting unit. Dah hamne boi ini sejen, buka nyu doga lako in Lyons. Nice nice pieces. Mesin bubur nene kafe, ngah nene nene pun kita dogal. Nyari rahsia kaya nak lain am. This is one work area, and that one is another work area. Pasti kom dengan ko musti hamerek. Lepas lo kan nulu duga cibir lah. Dama make sure nene. Defar nako. Cik anam bu. Awi orang nak. Pasti kom dengan ko lewa herek. Di nak dapat lendem nak. Lupa awal duga. Warna nyaw ham exactly. Nak kalau petajo. Wow. A sick freezing unit bina, man. Harap nak mabuo lesi sahlan. Masha Allah, Masha Allah, Masha Allah. Bem dengit yon. Two hours ago, reklan you in the I was. Believe it or not, the wasis are frozen solid already. Wah, bugal nengko cipir. Duma neng, duma kau gini sah. Di ki hamga. Takal semua loko yek yoi nono. While it on point freezes in no time. Wow, I think it's more D plus. So, what you can do is you can use the Benen Dombo SD. Wow. I'm going to use the AC. Wow. Twin businesses. It's more D plus. So, what you can do is you can use the next one. You can use the new one. You can use the new one. You can use the new one. Alba, yo ngat transfer lah tu. Ya transfer lah tu. Ha, code ni je. Okay, bersama. Nsi lah edis atau apa? Ha, sah sah. Sorry, agak dah. Bila bro? Alba, baca. Barah Allah sah bisu karya. Ha, baru mukir jangan nunggu nunggu barah karya. Ha, jangan nunggu mana forest de biru. Gambia tongkon na lombaria biru. Ha, biru kau yang nafuk kato. Barah isi kodok kino kato ni fobolong blabe. 56 branches more so the Gambia jam. Huh? Ha. Gambia kono ani Gambia bantala bangkol. Nko kono kia bere. Hmm? Kono sifa sifa fok falindiro fonya di lafta meme na kodi topoto ni kodi mara. Jamnom number one di nyonda. And num fana nata another enterprise is sotale. Bolo bolo mnyindi ko. Domorol fana kol fana be fira le le dadi ma ni domorol di fana petiat. Ha. Gambia dau da ya lo mafunfa kendol sotale di. Ha. E wo mo e odiat. Ha. Apelenda. Ni wo kani na lafta ni elen kendol ebi na. Ya le bukani lo kola. Abarka. Ha 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 ha. Ya londel chosano lo. Abarka.